Ladies and gents, welcome to Relax Running. Tyson Popplestone here. Now, one of the greatest performances of our lifetime took place over the weekend on the track with Jakob Ingebrigtsen smashing Daniel Komen's 3,000 meter world record by three seconds, almost, taking it down from seven minutes 20 to seven minutes 17. One thing you might not know about relaxed running is we're often looking at elite level performances to figure out what it is that these athletes are doing so well in their life, in their sport, that we can extract and apply to our own running performance, regardless of what level we run at, to see some massive improvements. And while we've focused so much on the ins and outs of Jakob's career over the last few years, I don't think we've offered a bite-sized takeaway video with some features that I personally believe are really standout features of this guy's running career. He seems to have an obsession with the small things which lead up to really big things which make a massive impact on his overall running career. Now, before we get into it, with that said, we are excited to let you know that Pillar has jumped on board as a sponsor of this channel and our podcast. If you're interested in micronutrition, making sure you rock up to the start line, ready to roll each and every week, regardless of what level you run at. They're offering 15% off their products. Follow the instructions in the description to this video below. But for now, let's have a look at Jakob Ingebrigtsen's career and what it is that he's doing so well that you and I can apply to our own running and hopefully see some massive results. Now, one thing you'll be aware of if you're not new to this channel is that we're constantly banging on about the idea of consistency producing results. The idea is running has a reputation of rewarding those who are most consistent, but there's a few things that often stop us seeing that consistency. This is something I think we can take away from Jakob because though he's still relatively young, it feels like he's been around forever. Not only did he start at 10 years old, but there's been very few times throughout his short career as a pro where we've seen him miss monster chunks of time due to injury and niggles. Now, one of the reasons for that is obviously as an elite level athlete, if you're making mistakes, if you're getting injured, if you're seeing niggles, you wanna go away and reflect on what it is that's causing these. Is there an imbalance? Is there too much volume? Is there too much intensity? Is there a lack of nutrition? Is there poor sleep? Put your finger on exactly what it is because when you're constantly on the sidelines because we do what too many runners do, which is just get out there and try and do as much as we can for as long as we can, might work for a short time, but it always sees us on the sidelines recovering. If you're always on the sidelines and recovering, your ability to build strength over time is going to be hampered. So if you are an athlete who has taken time away more than you think you should have due to injuries and niggles, do what an athlete like Jakob does and spend some time reflecting. It doesn't need to be an obstacle to your performance. In fact, we've seen very recently how quickly he's turned around an injury into an Olympic victory and a world record. The same is true for us, maybe not Olympic victory and world record, but we can get back to our highest level of performance if we take a smart and honest route back to where it is we like to be. But you're not gonna see this improvement unless you can take the time to be honest about what's causing the mistake in the first place. The second thing which I think is so interesting about an athlete like Jakob is it seems that the company that he's surrounded himself with by nature of his family has played a massive impact on not only his performance, but his confidence levels when it comes to running performance. If you're not familiar with the Ingebrigtsen family, the father, Gert, had a really solid plan in place for not only Jakob, but his two older brothers who were national stars in that middle distance scene themselves. He's naturally been overshadowed by Jakob's performances. But from a young age, Jakob was out there at the tail end of these guys in training. Now, when you've got two athletes at a world-class level and you're 12 or 13 years old, the truth is you still don't want to be overshadowed by your brother. And so he has been seen for so many years in and out holding on to the tails of these brothers. If you're constantly out there training by yourself, maybe this is something you can consider. Who is there that you can train with in and around your area that might be slightly ahead of where you are? Now, you don't have to go and chase them every single session, maybe just once a week, but this idea of being dragged to new levels of performance and new levels of confidence because of who you surround yourself with is something that I don't think we should overlook. Don't be afraid of some friendly competition on the sessions that you decide you're gonna push it a little harder than you otherwise would. The third thing we wanna talk about is Jakob's ability to bounce back. Now I've touched on his ability to do that through injury, but one thing that I don't think we focus on enough is an athlete's ability to bounce back from a poor race result. None could be more clear than his 1500 meter fourth place at the Paris Olympics just weeks ago. He was expected to win, or at the very least, finish in the top two. And what he calls a strategic error was the reason for his fourth place 
and disappointment. Now, what so many athletes, both community level and elite, do in these situations, they go away, they dwell on it, they feel bad about it, and they just hide out for a little while. Not Jakob. He had an opportunity to go out and redeem himself in the 5,000 meters. The heat was the next day, and that's exactly what he did. Don't lose track of what it is that you're trying to achieve by one short-term negative result. Another thing Jakob said is that the day after his 5,000 meter victory was that he was starting his training for the next Olympics in LA the day after. He's going out to try and achieve a 1,500, 5,000 meter double there. And so with this broader picture of what it is that he's trying to create, he's able to take himself away a little bit from the minute details of a disappointing performance and go out with the intention of creating a little bit of a legacy for himself. Are you the kind of athlete that can dwell on a bad performance? Don't let it bring you down. Every single race is an opportunity to redeem your last performance. So that is a way healthier, way more enjoyable way to approach the sport than just getting depressed about your one poor race. Now, the fourth thing is his technique. Now, this is something that we've looked at in more detail. I'm going to link that video just here. But the technical side of running is often overlooked. Jakob has an incredible ability to stay relaxed at a really high pace, even at the tail end of a running performance. Now you can see this through the relaxation, through his jaw, through his shoulders, through his hands. We'll show you a breakdown of his technique in this video. If you're interested in learning the ins and outs of running technique and how it can improve your own running performance, highly recommend that you watch a couple of our videos on that. Get in touch, we can point you in the right direction on how to establish that. But running has a reputation for way overlooking the technical side of performance. We should be guided by tennis players and golfers and swimmers. Technique has a massive impact and you only need to look at the likes of Ali Kipchoge or Jakob Ingebrigtsen or any other elite performance to see that this is true. And the final thing we wanna look at is pain. Pacing and strategy. Now, in the example I gave earlier, we see the impact that pacing can have on an overall race result through his 1500 meters at the Paris Olympics. We saw the positive impact it can have over his 3000 meters in Silesia over the weekend. What you want to figure out is, first of all, what is it you're trying to achieve with your race? Are you trying to win? Are you trying to run a time? And how is the best way that you can hit that time? So many athletes, especially if you're new, make the mistake of going out like a primary school kid and going, I'm just going to run as fast as I can for as long as I can. And as a result, that first 400 meters might be quick and the rest of the race is just them doing their best to hold on for dear life. What you'll want to do is have an idea of the time you want to run. You could see this beautifully with Jakob over the weekend. He clearly clearly had an idea or one eye on the world record because the times that he went out in was 59 seconds, which is about 7.22 pace. We all know he kicks down. That's the style of run that he likes the best. And as a result, we're left with the opportunity to not overexert ourselves early, but to come home strong. Confidence is built through something like that. And the same is true for you. Don't make the mistake of going out and just holding on for dear life. Figure out what is it that you are trying to achieve. And then with that, what's the best way to break that down into bite-sized pieces to get you across the line as close to your goal as possible. I'd absolutely love to know what you think are some other standout features of an athlete like Jakob Ingebrigtsen's routines, race strategy, training plans in the comments below. For now, happy training. I hope that was helpful and I'll see you here again next week.